This is the fourth revision video for Edexcel P3. In today's video, we're going to be looking at refraction and reflection. We will be using diagrams to look at total internal reflection. We're going to look at refraction in terms of radiation speed and we're going to use Snell's law to calculate the critical angle. So what are refraction and reflection? From your previous studies, you should be aware that reflection refers to a wave bouncing off of a surface. By a surface, we mean the boundary between two mediums. This causes the wave to bounce back into the medium that it was travelling through. For a plane mirror, the angle of incidence, which is I, will equal the angle of reflection, which is R. So we have the angle of incidence, which is the angle between the incoming incident ray and the normal, and the angle of reflection, the angle between the normal and the reflected ray. In refraction, we will be looking at a wave changing direction as it enters or exits a medium. This change in direction is caused by a change in speed as the wave moves from one medium to another. And it is the refraction that we are more interested in in P3. Here is a simple diagram of a refraction. We can see that the wave is travelling from air to glass and then back into air. We have two refraction events. One, as the incident ray enters the glass block and then secondly where the refracted ray meets the edge of the glass block and appears as the emergent ray. The questions that they can ask you in the exam are very similar to the ones at the bottom. So what happens to the wave when it slows down? The wave bends towards the normal. Does light travel faster in air or glass? We can see that the light is travelling slower in the glass as it refracts towards the normal. If it speeds up, then it refracts away from the normal. What would happen if a wave enters a glass block along the normal? So if it were to enter here, it would still get affected and it would slow down. However, it is not going to change direction. It is already travelling along the normal, so it will not refract towards it. And finally, does all of the light pass through into the new medium? The answer to this is no. Some of the light will bounce off. Some will be reflected off back into the medium. And it is this relationship between what is refracted and what is reflected that we will be looking at. In order to examine this relationship between refraction and reflection, we need to look at the refractive index. The refractive index of a material is a measure of the factor by which the material will bend light. We know that different materials will bend light in different ways due to their densities. For example, glass will have a higher refractive index than air, as will water. Most of the work on refractive indexes was done by Mr. Willebrod Snellius in the late 16th to early 17th century and he devised something called Snell's Law. Snell's Law is an equation that you need to be able to use for P3, however you are not given it on the front of the paper. It is as follows, where the refractive index, or N, is equal to the sine of the angle of incidence, I, 
over the sine of the angle of refraction, R. This can be further extended by working out the refractive index as we will see in a couple of slides time. As we stated, every substance has its own index of refraction and we use air as our benchmark. So air has a refractive index of 1, we can see that water is higher and then glass is higher again. For comparison, there are three further substances with higher refractive indexes. In order to calculate these angles, we need to be able to manipulate Snell's law. So Snell's law effectively comes down to sine of i over sine of r equaling a constant. Because of this, we can use it to help us work out refractive indexes. This can be rewritten as below to sine i over sine r equals n r over n i, whereby n i is the refractive index of the medium the ray is coming from over the refractive index of the medium the ray is going into. We will look at this again on the next slide. So from this equation, we have sine r, which is the sine of angle of incidence, sine r, which is the sine of the angle of refraction, which is equal to nr, which is the refractive index of the medium you're refracting into, over ni, which is the refractive index of the medium that you're coming from. From this, we are able to work out refractive indexes and or the angles of instance or refraction. In the exam, they can ask you to work out the overall refractive index or they may give it to you. An example exam question could look like this. So light passes from air into glass with a refractive index of 1.6. Calculate the angle of refraction for light of instant at 20 degrees. In this question, they've already given us the total refractive index. So we do not need to work that out. It has already been given to us at 1.6. We've also been given the angle of instance, which is 20 degrees degrees. So from our equation we can start to plug in these numbers. From the question we have already identified the refractive index n as being equal to 1.6 and the angle of instance is 20. If we plug these numbers in we end up with the following equation. So we now have the sine of 20 over sine r equals 1.6. In order to use this, we need to rearrange this. In order to do this, we first times both sides by sine r to give us sine 20 equals 1.6 times sine r, and then we divide both sides by 1.6 to give us sine 20 over 1.6 equals sine r. Using a calculator, we can now do sine 20 over 1.6, which gives us 0.214 to three decimal places equals sine r. However, we are not interested in sine r. We are still trying to calculate the angle of refraction. In order to do this, we need to rearrange the equation in order to make R the subject. To do this, we are going to do each side to the sine minus 1, which gives us sine to the minus 1 of 0 0.214. Again, I have rounded this to three decimal places equals R, which will finally allow us to calculate R 
which gives us an answer of R equals 12.34 degrees to two decimal places. In the mark scheme, we would be looking at marks for the successful rearrangement as well as the successful substitution and then finally the answer here. Here are three further questions. So we have light passing from air to crystal with an overall refractive index of 1.5. Calculate the angle of refraction for light instant at 30 degrees, then one at light instant 20, and then finally one where you have to calculate the overall refractive index. I want you to pause the video now. The answers will be on the next slide. The answers for the prior questions are the first one, the angle is 19.47 degrees, the second one 14.14 degrees, and finally 27.1 degrees. As we looked at in the previous lesson, when we looked at lenses, sometimes light is reflected instead of refracted. In the next tutorial video, we will look at the uses of total internal reflection. However, now we will look at how it occurs. So the type of refraction that we are used to, we have the incident ray coming in, hitting the boundary between the two mediums and then being refracted. However, as the instant ray increases, the amount of refraction decreases until we reach the critical angle. At this point, the light will be refracted along the boundary between the two mediums. When the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle, the light will now be reflected inwards back into the medium it was travelling through. This is known as total internal reflection. For P3, we need to be able to calculate the critical angle using Snell's law as well as use it in order to prove the idea behind total internal reflection. For glass, the critical angle is around 42 degrees. In order to calculate the critical angle between two mediums, we can once again use Snell's law. As we have seen, Snell's law states that the refractive index is equal to sine i over sine r. We can then rearrange this in order to calculate the critical angle, whereby the formula becomes the refractive index is equal to 1 over sine c, or sine c equals nr over ni, whereby nr is the refractive index of the medium light is travelling towards, and ni is the refractive index of the medium the light is travelling from sine c being the sine of the critical angle. Some example exam questions could be as follows. So finding the refractive index of a material from a given critical angle, finding the critical angle from a given refractive index, or finding the critical angle from two given refractive indexes. For question one, we can use the equation as seen on the previous slide. So for question one, this will be n, which is the refractive index, is equal to 1 over sine 40, which is equal to 1.56. For question two, we are going to use the same equation, but rearrange it. So we will have 1.3 equals 1 over sine c, which we will first rearrange to 1.3 times sine c equals 1, and then rearrange further to 1 divided by 1.3 equals sine c. By 
calculating this, we will get an answer to sine c, but as with the previous examples, we will then need to do sine minus 1 in order to fully calculate c. So this will first give us 0.770 to three decimal places is equal to sine c, which we will now rearrange to the sine of minus 1 of 0 0.770 is equal to c, which will give us an answer of 50.3 degrees to one decimal place. For question 3, we need to use our final equation of sine c equals nr over ni. We have both nr and ni. This gives us sine c equals 1 over 1.48. Once again, we will need to do the sine minus 1 to both sides, which gives us a final answer of 43 degrees. In the next tutorial, we will look at using the critical angle for total internal reflection, both for the transmission of light and information.